show. Trey from League City has some question about some repainting tips. And he's kind of afraid you're going to think this is a stupid question. Never. Okay. Trey writes, I'm going to be doing some painting with latex paint over oil paint. Can I use Kills Primer over the oil paint? If so, which one? I know there is an oil primer and a latex one. I'm painting some bathroom cabinets. So, Tom, what's your advice for Trey? Can you do it? Yes. Will I tell you to do it? No. Never, ever Tom Tynan says no. That doesn't mean you can't do it. But it's not a good process. Oil-based paint, you already have a painted finish on there. In essence, you have a primer, unless you're doing a drastic color change from a very dark paint, like a black or a dark purple or a dark navy blue, into a white color, then sometimes a primer will help step up the process and eliminate a coat of paint. But what you should probably do if you're not doing a drastic change or you're going to a darker color for another reason you don't have to worry about it, is wipe that all down just wipe it down with a uh, a trisodium phosphate and water just clean it really well it'll etch the surface and then you can go back with your good quality latex paint if you want uh, if it's woodwork on the inside of the house it's not something i'd recommend especially on cabinets i would tell you go back with an oil-based paint now if you're going to go back with an oil-based paint which would be my recommendation because it's woodwork then what I would tell you to do is wipe it down with a chemical deglosser because you're going to put oil on oil, and that would be a product like Crutter. You'll hear our, our uh, certified home show pro, Rudy, at Rudy's Quality Painting. He tells me that's the best product he's ever used, and I've never personally used it. I used to use one called Peso, but the Crutter, he said, is even easier to use and a better result. So, And it starts with a K, K-R-U. So anyway, that would be the way to do oil on oil, and that's how I would tell you to do it. But as far as these one size fits all primers, never do that. So I'm going to leave this last thought with you. When you buy a paint, whether it's a Sherwin Williams, a Benjamin Moore, Pittsburgh, whatever the case may be, always use a primer if you insist on using one or if you need to use one, the same brand. They spent millions and millions of dollars in research and development to make sure their primer is compatible with their paint. So don't switch it with an off-brand paint that you get on some shelf out of a, a very nice but not a good store to buy primer. If you know what we mean. Now, you have talked... at that Because I go to those stores all the time. I buy all kinds uh, yeah. of stuff from them. Yeah. Just not that. <laughs> so I hear, we get a lot of questions about that, that product in particular, Kills, the K-I-L-Z brand there. It's a great marketing. They marketed it like right. crazy. Well, so is, is it not what you should use then? I mean, because I it's heard you steer gummy. right away from it. It doesn't. Okay. I've never used it for the near fact that everybody that I know in the professional side, they don't use it for good reason because they have and it's gummy. It, it makes you fight to get a good surface later. Uh, it's not compatible with a lot of the products you buy. And being a professional, you know that things need to match. So uh, that's one of the problems in the painting industry. You have some people that call themselves painters just because they know what a brush and a, a can of paint is. But you have professionals that realize that paint has a, a chemical makeup. It, it has a... a you know, a longevity to it, it has a feel to it, it has a finished look to it, how it levels itself, there are additives that go in it. It's it's not as easy as people make it out to be, unless you're just painting some sheetrock, which is pretty uh, forgiving. You don't have a lot of problem with that. But when you get into cabinets and stuff like that, and you're looking for a nice finish, or furniture, or something of that nature, the professionals know you don't buy a product just off the shelf like that. But boy, it's all marketing. There was a product for years, it's still out there, Thompson's Water Seal. They sold millions of gallons of it, but it was nothing but a waxed base sealer that lasted about six months. And people kept saying, hey, I just put it on, it doesn't look, in, it doesn't look good anymore. And there were much better professional products out there, but it was just marketed well. And there's nothing wrong with good marketing, but make sure you know what you're getting marketed and what, you're gonna, what kind of results you're going to get out of it. Perfect example of what we're talking about. Click on the Ask Tom button, send in your question, <laughs> and you'll get the adv advice to finish like a pro. That's exactly what we're talking about. Oh, that's okay. What we do here. I thought you meant marketing. Every day. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. No, that's, you know, that's my job. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, well, actually, it's funny you say that. Somebody told me, what, asked me the other day, what's the difference between 
advertising and marketing. Do you know the difference? Interesting. No. Advertising stops at the front door. As soon as advertising gets you to the store, marketing sells the product. So that's the difference. There you go. Little, oh. little advertising 101 for you today, kids. You got a question? Like we'll be happy to help you out. But go visit homeshowradio.com. Uh, fill out that Ask Tom form you saw a second ago, and Tom will answer your question just like that just, and give you the same professional advice. And we'll post, and he likes doing it so much, we do one every day. We post them at homeshowradio.com, our YouTube channel, of course, on our Facebook page.